Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. I'm swatching more Lisa Eldridge lipsticks today. The nudes. When Lisa Eldridge released new lipsticks this summer, I was ecstatic. But then I started going through and looking at them. Okay, is this similar to anything I already have? Is this like something that I love? Is this a shade I would actually wear? And the hardest part for me was deciding what to purchase. These are some of my most reached for because a nude lipstick kind of goes with anything. I'm gonna start with the lightest of the luxuriously lucent lipsticks. This is the shade Lemon Pre. This is brand new for this summer. And this is one that I almost didn't get because I'm not a really light pale beige lipstick wearer. It always makes me look like death on a cracker or concealer lips. And that's not what I'm going for. But I took a chance on this one because it looks so pretty on so many of the other models. And I'm so glad I got it. Here is Lemme Pre. I've reached for this so much. This is one of those lipsticks that when I have a really bold eye going on, like something really deep and intense, I reach for this because it gives me just a little bit of color without being too much. On days when I'm not wearing any lipstick, I reach for this because it gives me just a little bit of color and not too much. And it also is super hydrating. If you're not familiar with this luxuriously lucent formula, it is pillowy, it is plush, it is comfortable, it's super hydrating, and it lasts for about four hours on my lips before I like before it's completely gone. I'd say at about the three hour mark, I'm usually pretty happy putting another layer on, but this lip formula is also super buildable. Uh, one swipe, it's really light. A uh, couple of swipes, you get a little bit more, but you can just like keep going on and on. And you don't always get more color, but you get a nice, generous layer of product on your lips. With a shade this light, you don't actually get a ton more color, but I get a really nice, plushy feeling on the lips that lasts for hours. I don't find that this formula, although it is hydrating, although it is comfortable, although it is kind of a creamy feel on the lips, doesn't actually trail outside of my lips. I have this formula in bolder colors, and I find that it's always really forgiving on my 47-year-old lips that do have those lines and tendencies for other sorts of kind of creamy lipsticks to kind of just feather outside of where I want them. So this is what it looks like just on its own. Somebody made a mention in one of my previous lip swatch videos is that the pigmentation of your lips plays a big part. And I feel especially in the nudes, especially these lighter shades, your natural lip color is really gonna come through. I have very little natural lip color now that I'm in my late 40s. I feel like when I was younger, I had a lot more rosiness to them, but that's not the case. So my lips take on a color like this and do pretty well. It still is just a little bit warm, almost, um, not really peach, but more like maybe delicate apricot leaning, and I like that about it, and I normally don't like kind of those peachy apricot shades, but I think it's really pretty and so wearable. This next luxuriously lucent shade is Kitten Mischief. I have loved it so much, and it's been kind of like a daily lipstick. I wore it a ton when it came out last year, but I still reach for it so much. Here is Kitten Mischief compared to Le Mepri. I feel like this one definitely is a little bit more apricot. This one has a little bit more earthiness to it. While it is still a really warm lipstick, it is super easy to wear. I feel like it goes with so much. And with my skin tone, it's just enough without being too much. So this is a great one for me to wear again on days where I have a really bold eye look or on days where I'm wearing hardly anything, but I don't wanna look like I have like a colorless lip going on. This is such a pretty color and I love the shine that this offers. It is just so comfortable. This next lipstick is Spirited Away. This was the lipstick that I wore perpetually last summer. I got it, I fell in love with it, and I couldn't put it down. This one has almost gone through the wash a couple of times because I keep it in my pants pocket. I always wanna have it with me. <laughs> but I have to remind myself, especially when I realize how much I pay for these, check your pockets before you load the wash. So here is Spirited Away. This has a beautiful nuance to it. I think that right here under the lights that I have here in my beauty table area, it reads a little bit more terracotta and warm. But what's interesting is as I'm looking at it here on the surface of my hand, yes, it is kind of a little bit more earthy, a little bit more warm leaning, but there is almost a pink 
aspect to this. And not a cool pink, but kind of like a warmer pink, like a spicy pink. It has a little bit of rosiness to it. And that rosiness really makes it read, especially on my skin tone, like a bold lipstick, but not trying too hard. This is not like a straight up red or a bright hot pink. There is something about this lipstick that gives me that vibrancy and that bright without being too bright. It's so wearable. It's astonishingly wearable. I really like it so much and I am not surprised that this has been one of my most reached for Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. This next lipstick is one that I already swatched in a previous video, but I'm putting it here because it also at times can read very neutral, very nude. This is the shade Painterly. I think what's interesting is that when I swatch this next to some of the rosier, pinkier shades, it definitely leaned a little bit rosier. Here, next to these warmer, you know, kind of peachy, a little more terracotta leaning, it leans a little more brown. This is kind of like the chameleon out of all of my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. There's a couple of other ones that have a little bit of wiggle room, how to interpret them. Are they cool? Are they warm? And that's what I love so much about Lisa's lip color choices, that when she's creating a color, it's not just straight up orange. It's not just, you know, straight up purple. There's nuance to it. There's something that really makes it so wearable on such a wide variety of skin tones. And this one here, is definitely more of that chameleon shade because when it was swatched next to pinks let me tell you she looked pink and here it definitely looks very neutral and it looks very much like a perfect nude but deeper lipstick the last of the luxuriously lucent lipsticks i have for you today is another new one from this summer this one's called meet me in berlin Here's Meet Me in Berlin. If you're looking at this compared to the rest, I definitely feel like this is the brownest of all the lipsticks in this lineup. And what's interesting is that when I first was looking at the swatches of this and I was looking at the lipstick itself, you know, when I was, I was like, I am wear brown lipstick, why am I gonna buy a brown lipstick? And then I had that moment where I was like, wait a minute. Every other time you said, I don't wear a blank, blank, blank shade, but you buy one of Lisa's, it's always like one of the best lipsticks ever. So I purchased this one, like Lemon Pre going, I don't wear beige lipstick. I love this. I have been wearing this a lot, especially for work. It's super comfortable and it goes with so much, but I do love that this has kind of like that 90s, vibe to it and I never found a shade in the 90s that worked well for me never ever I had a whole box full of like 90s quintessentially 90s lipsticks that I was wearing through college and they all looked wrong and I don't know whether it was I just wasn't confident in myself yet but let me tell you, you put me in a red lipstick you know 10 out of 10 you put me in a bright fuchsia lipstick 10 out of 10 you put me in a brown lipstick and it was like a 2 out of 10 it was just not right this is the brown that i always wanted and could never find and it might be that the finish is different it might be the undertone lisa i feel is like the master of just just the right a little bit of this a little bit of that to create the perfect shade that's going to work on so many people so looking at it in the bullet i was like I don't wear brown lipstick, but then I saw it on the models and I was convinced. This is an absolutely gorgeous shade and I have been in love. We're moving into the True Velvet lipsticks. The first one I have is Velvet Fawn. Here is Velvet Fawn. It's a beautiful matte formula. This formula, if you've never tried the True Velvets, it's the matte lipstick that my 47 year old lips can wear. <laughs> the older I get, the more persnickety my lips get, the drier they feel, the less able they are to power through with kind of a slightly drying formula. If it's not thoroughly nourishing, it's not gonna happen. I am forever putting lip balm, a lip sleeping mask at night, like all sorts of treatments on my lips. I need to keep them hydrated. And if I start the day out, like most days, with beautifully hydrated lips, I can wear this all day and the moisture that's in this formula lasts beautifully on my lips. I like this lipstick. I reach for it quite a lot. I, was, I can always tell, you know, the ones where we're starting to really get like a little bit more flat and it's not quite so perfect. These are the ones that get a lot of use. I didn't realize how many times I had used Velvet Fawn until I took a look at the bullet. And I can tell the shorter and kind of flatter the angle gets, it means I've reached for it a lot. 
but um, it's a really easy to use nude lipstick and surprisingly goes with so many things. This next velvet lipstick is Velvet Intrigue. Here is Velvet Intrigue. As I was going through and lining all of these up, I swatched the ones I that are newer to my collection that I didn't know where they fell kind of like in the gradient of lightest to darkest. And I was so sure that Velvet Fawn was the lightest. It looks like Velvet Intrigue is. You'll also notice that Velvet Intrigue here definitely has more of that peach or that apricot lean to it. It's very easy to wear. Another one of those that I pull out when I'm wearing either really light makeup or um, if I'm wearing like a really heavy eye, like I'm wearing grays and blacks and, and kind of silvers, sometimes I will pull for a lipstick like this. This next lipstick is Velvet Muse. This is another one that I swatched in that pink family, but I feel like it also pulls very nude. Let me put it on for you. Here is Velvet Muse. As you can see, it definitely has a pink lean to it, but it reads very neutral on the lips. It goes really well on a day when you want just a little something, but not too much. This is one of those, I can tell by the fact that, you know, she's getting a little flat. This is a very well-loved and well-used lipstick. I reach for this one on days when I have kind of like cooler, rosy tones going on, but I do really consider it kind of like more of a nude than a pink, even though it definitely has more of those, you know, rosy tones going on here. But it is a beautiful, beautiful, easy to wear lipstick. This next lipstick is Velvet Affair. Here is Velvet Affair. It is definitely a richer, um, almost more chocolate shade. Every time I put Velvet Affair on, I feel like I need more blush. <laughs> and I tend to over blush just a little bit. And this is one that I wear on days when I have less on the eyes and I go more lips and cheeks, brows, lips and cheeks. I feel like this looks really good when I do something like that. But this is Velvet Affair. So the last one I'm going to swatch for you today is Velvet Cinnabar. Here is Velvet Cinnabar. This is another one that I swatched in a different video. I swatched this one with the reds but I feel like it fits really well here in with the nudes as well. It definitely has kind of like that really deep terracotta feel to it, and it really does bring a little bit more to the table than just a plain nude. Taking a look at all of these swatches, I feel like we've got a really wide variety of shades going on here. Starting here with Le Mepri, Kitten Mischief, Spirited Away, Painterly, Meet Me in Berlin, Velvet Fawn, Velvet Intrigue, Velvet Muse, Velvet Affair, and Velvet Cinnabar. I wear all of these. Some of them I wear a little bit more than others, but I am not disappointed in having, you know, 10 gorgeous nude shades to play with from Lisa. I think the fact that there are three that I've used in other videos, one in a red and two in a pink, that they, they have that kind of chameleon-like quality, depending on what makeup you pair them with, what clothing you pair them with, that they really can pull one direction or another, maybe pink or a little nude, or a little red or a little nude. And that's the really great thing about Lisa's color choices. I feel she's very artistic in the colors that she creates for us to wear. There's not another brand out there that I can wear all their shades. You know, I could wear all the reds and all the neutrals and all the pinks because sometimes maybe reds are neutrals, but no pinks, not on my life, not even if you paid me. And I think that's the great thing is that Lisa so carefully creates these colors in such an artistic way that they work for everybody. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. Let me know if you have a favorite nude shade. Is there one that you were hoping I would swatch that I haven't yet? Let me know in the comments down below. Or if you're just like, I love nude lipsticks, this is my ride or die and it's not from Lisa, let me know what it is as well. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day, and I'll see you again soon.